before we get started, I don't know if you saw my DM uh, about the YouTube thing. Do you remember what you found last fall with the YouTube links? And uh, like, because that people are digging into that again. Like the trip uh, addresses dot soul on GitHub and. Um, you found something related to like the K-pop, like, and it was the craziest thing. Like, you happened to just like select some description, and it led to a YouTube video or something. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was because it wasn't. Yeah. So what it was was like uh, when we were finding, like, when we were like figuring out that like this is all a crazy weird conspiracy thing um the developer was launching all all types of tokens and it was confusing the hell out of everybody because they were all like random letters and numbers or something some of them were but then what i did is i copied and pasted those random letters and numbers into google and it pulled up a youtube video right and the youtube video was like pointing to it and it said like timestamp something right that was like the name of the token and the ticker was like these weird letters and numbers and so i went to the timestamp of the youtube video that it said to go to or whatever uh on the ticker and yeah no, it, i forget what the message was but it said something and then the next token that they released was like the irc token which had like the link to the irc chat so that's how right we it, there, yeah. it was insane i knew it was so incredible like weird that's what Rig and Naked uh, Matrix we were looking at yesterday, they figured out that, like, some of those other addresses, like, were pointing to different timestamps. And I yeah. was like, dude, that... I can't... Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and there, there's, like, a web of tokens connected to the Greenland token, and I know that one of them, I think that one that's, like, mainly paired with Greenland, it's, uh, it's another YouTube video, so if you, like, copy and paste that into YouTube or whatever, you'll find this YouTube video, and it's, like, a video of Greenland, and there's, like, these guys giving, like, they're, like, having a discussion, but it's, like, all in a different language. I don't understand. I don't know what they speak in Greenland, but um, it's just weird, because it's, like, one of those tokenized assets, and it seems like... I forget what the dev said at the at the at the meetup about those tokenized asset tokens, but um, I don't know. It's like cool that they maybe it may be able to tokenize like YouTube videos or certain things that are maybe yeah. He just said that on web two, like that each frame, three. each frame could be tokenized. <laughs> but yeah, that just goes like that proves like what so many people are talking about, like in terms of Easter eggs and breadcrumbs and like. Richard asking us to take control of the network, um, and, and you know so many other things. Like there, there's so many little like so-called coincidences that keep happening, um, and I think like there's, there's this like almost like uh, uh, Da Vinci Code, you know, national treasure kind of like treasure map, literally like laid out where like we have like the community has to be the one to bring everything to fruition, and like everything's there laid out um and and together like you know there's some like few people that are really like going hard and bringing like the majority of the alpha but ultimately it's like consensus it's like community that's going to like really make everything pop in my mind no man you're definitely right about that for sure uh, it's been a freaking crazy ride to get here, you know, and we had to <laughs> go through many ups and downs, obviously, but it seems like we're getting close to the finish line, or at least a little bit. Um, I was in a one of, like, the private PDI research groups earlier today, and I don't know if uh, this Pulse Trends guy down here is, if that is Riggs, Riggs service, because he was, yeah, uh, he should come up and speak, because he was really given a lot of good information in, in the research group today. Um, I really hope if he has time to come up and talk about it, he can. End game. There's no end game, bro. We're only halfway. We're not even halfway. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Thank you How for you doing, hosting me in every space. Uh, always good to see you, hear your voice, and everyone in here, man. We're just beginning, bro. <laughs> it's so early. It's so early. This is. I said it. A quick thought to add to yours, Torin, is um, when if, if you think about Bitcoin and how it, it first started, there's. Are you not hearing? Hey, Rig, hey, hey, Rig. I'm actually going to gonna drop smart. down now that you got so many speakers. I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, there's way more bigger, you know, more important speakers. So thanks, sir. I'd just like to say hi, Zach, and I'm going to step down now. 
<laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. Oh, man. Can you hear me? I don't know what's going on. Riggy, Riggy, yeah, we can Riggy, hear you. Riggy, you see? Yeah, I can hear me now. But um, no, I'm just eating right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All good, man. Thanks for joining. Ben, do you want to go ahead and finish what you're saying? Sure. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, it's a quick thought. It was just that, um, like Satoshi, just going off the map. I think Richard's duty is to kind of just do nothing from here on out, and everyone's expecting him to, uh, you know, pump their bags and, and and do a bunch of shit for them, which he definitely can, and he can, you know put all that money that he has into his own ecosystem, which I'm sure he will, but it's, it's supposed to be, um, true DeFi. And if it's true DeFi, then he's not supposed to have control over the network and the control has to come from us. And I think, uh, 414 was the first one to kind of grasp this, this concept and like grab it by the balls where their mission being bringing P, I, I, I'm not even sure, certain it's their mission to bring PDI to a dollar. I think it's, uh, you know, a, a team outside of 414, but they understood that if you develop a network and an ecosystem that's attached to a narrative of bringing something that was worthless to a dollar and then pegging it at a dollar, um, it's just a matter of time before the community gets it. I think this is what we're starting to uncover is if we start creating our own ecosystems with burned liquidity in PDI, um, eventually when we get to a dollar, that burned liquidity turns into millions of dollars worth. So if you have any kind of business idea, any kind of concept, um, you're instantly going to get millions of dollars worth of, of liquidity that you otherwise would never be able to get. And if everyone just kind of thinks that way and, and starts launching their own projects, we'll, we'll get there really quick. Nice, man. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you, though, about, you know, stepping aside and keeping it decentralized and things like that. You know, I definitely don't think that Richard really needs to do anything. Um, I really hope he does get back to streaming one day because those were always fun. But, yeah, you never know. Hopefully he does. But yeah, thanks uh, for stepping up the verse. What's up, buddy? I hope you've been doing good. Uh, are we speaking with Chris or uh, is it the other? I forget your buddy's this, name. This is Trey. Did, did you oh. invite me to speak, man? I, I didn't mean to come up here, man. Yeah, I was bro. Just coming to listen to you guys, but uh, <laughs> now that I'm here, I say what's going on. What's good? How you been, Zach? I've been doing well, man. Uh, yeah, no, I always invite you guys up here to speak because you guys are always hopping all over the place, you know, different uh, crypto communities and things like that. So it's always cool to hear what you guys have going on. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, we're, we're so excited, uh, obviously, about some of the developments. We've been hearing about some things. I, obviously, I, I think Pulse, Pulse Trends is going to talk about some of that. So leave that, leave that to him. But uh, yeah, pretty excited just to be continually paying attention to this ecosystem um since since the launch and uh man we we o over here honestly chris and i we decided on this a long time ago and uh we just got to say you know we're, we're just living in gratitude right now really um buying a lot of meme coins on different chains and we're vested and we appreciate every time you give us a call because uh we like uh we like getting into more and more of this atropa ecosystem i uh, also see sunny's up here also want to thank just say thank you for what you've built um, I really feel like it's um, it's undervalued at this point, and it's, it's going to blow up, and it's super exciting just to be a part of that, and thank you for building uh, Die Hard as well, and the passive nature of that is awesome. So, uh, yeah, man, I just, uh, I just all I can say is I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be in this ecosystem, thankful to be across all different kinds of blockchains, and if, you, if you're about that kind of stuff, we're always making calls on our channel. <clears throat> we have a wealth group as well. You guys can check out. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I've got for you. I just uh, utterly thankful for everything and uh, uh, praise be to the Lord. Hell yeah, man. No, it's always good to hear from you. Uh, thanks for coming to join and uh, speak a little bit. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited to hear from Pulse Trends. Uh, I don't know if, buddy, if you got your uh, microphone back up. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> yeah, no, I can hear you. You can hear us yeah. right now. Yeah, I can hear you. I've been going. I've just been driving, man. I'm almost back to the house right now. So, yeah, man, there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff that's been going on. Some some things that you know we've been looking at and 
trying to uncover, you know, I think like uh, Torin was saying, you know, like some of the breadcrumbs that have been led and some of the things that have been left for us to find. And like he said, uh, like community consensus and us trying to catch up to them, because I think uh, he wouldn't have set things in motion. He definitely wouldn't have spent for, you know, thrown four hundred million dollars into a protocol like SDI unless he had already known or uh, trusted that protocol. And that solidified a lot of things in my mind. Um, what was going on, uh, especially with the, you know, the owner, well, not the owner, the founder of it, you know, being, uh, well, the name, Hex or not, uh, but just kind of, there's just certain little things like, the, you know, you know, in being defined, uh, you know, taking nine irons, like kind of expanding on nine irons research, which was more, uh, chain driven. And my research was more relationship, uh, driven, uh, to try to find and try to find out unique things that were happening on chain, but as well as making the connections with the people, right? The people that he knows, the connections that he had, the, the breadcrumbs that were left, and then the, the things that were there that I believe were left for a reason, right? Like, uh, you know, just certain statements that were made, things on things like that on tweets, uh, the, the, the name Maria, just uh, all that, like, and how it all can tie together and how it all seemingly has tied together. Like, there is a Maria that runs Summer Finance. That's one of the protocols that's used on the front end of MakerDAO. Um, she used to work at Ave, which was a fork of a spark is a fork of Ave, and she used to work at MakerDAO as well. Uh, Hexanaut was an ex engineer at MakerDAO. Um, he worked on, I believe, like stable coins and things like that. And now he's pretty much revolutionized the stable coin market um, with this uh, the ability to uh, you know make pay, make passive income on holding SDI, and then also off of the collateral using Morph uh, Morph Labs, Morpho Labs, Morpho Labs. And uh, they continue to raise the debt ceilings and they continue to long and short stable coins and things like that to uh, to continue to make profit and continue to, uh, <clears throat> within their means, do the, uh, you know, seemingly be able to mint die. And they're using the, something called Block Atlantica, uh, which is an AI driven technology and uh, is, give, you know, that's what's telling them that, you know, the market is due for this amount of liquidity and in the play and, uh, you know, what they're using to, you know, back it and how what they're going to do there is kind of like what where we're where we're headed next you know it's like uh some of it's a little bit of a mystery but i think uh someone said it best i believe it was actually maria and one of where she's working at maker it's like the best type of technology or the best thing to do for for like like recognition or to grow a community is to to have a, a trusted source but just enough like fantasy or a little bit of the unknown keeps that stickiness and uh, i think that's one thing that atropa has it has that little bit of weird vibe to it where it almost seems like it's two people talking to one person and it's like just kind of acting a little bit outlandish at times but you know people just keep coming back and i think that's one thing that's really hard to find within the crypto space is like that stickiness to keep coming back and then being able to <clears throat> not be a pvp type of atmosphere I think we all feel like this is a place where we can all win, and I think Sonny was the uh, me of that, but uh, the ecosystem that he built, and uh, so it kind of led me to want to build as well and build on top of him, like he built on top of Tropa, you know, build on top of him, and uh, yeah, man, it's definitely exciting, and then uh, just like, yeah, man, just like so we can all, yeah, I think there is, there's enough money in crypto, and there will be enough, and there's more coming. Especially now that we're trying to move away from the fiat, like the fiat system. I think we were talking about that earlier. Um, just kind of not having to, you know, rely on the fiat uh, economic system anymore, right? Like USDT putting so much debt into the system um, just by, you know, you give us a dollar, but the dollar doesn't hit the chain, but you mint two tokens inside of a liquidity pool. I mean, you start putting the chain in uh, under stress and now... You know, now that DAI went multi-collateral to where you could use multiple assets to back DAI. And now it's, you know, if Richard holding the keys to the maker contract, you know, what assets he can use to, you know, that he could use to then uh, back the DAI on Pulse Chain. It's going to be exciting. It's like, I think a lot of people are missing out on the actual the, the vision here. And it's unfortunate. And uh, it's seemingly the, the whole point of this thing was socially engineered in a way to where... At first, maybe they thought we were like hex hexagons were against us and we were against them. But at the end of the day, like one won't work without the other. It's like a handshake, uh, but like literally something that was socially engineered by <laughs> by the man himself. And I expect nothing less of him. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah. So um, I woke up this morning to like a bunch of those voice 
texts in the Telegram chat, and there was some pretty interesting stuff that you guys were talking about. Um, one of the things that I remember hearing was something, I think maybe you were saying something about uh, collateralizing the die with hex or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just that. I mean, if he has the if he has the control of the ball on on pulse, um, he can definitely choose to use uh, hex as a as an asset. And uh, it's it's seemingly it's been tested before. Uh, there was something called yieldification, uh, I believe, and was, and I think there was another another little test chain. I think it was called X DNA, where they were utilizing these. Uh, I don't know if it was the, I don't know if it was the real hex, right? Is the name was just hex. I mean, I didn't look. And then they were like utilizing and mining and doing different things with hex on uh, like little like almost like test networks type things. But, I mean, the name X DNA was pretty unique, <clears throat> like cross DNA, kind of like a copy of a chain. So yeah, the name themselves were unique, and then the the fact that they were utilizing um, seemingly either hex or some sort of hex algorithm um, to be um, mining and uh, yeah, utilizing it as some some sort of backing for. Uh, they're, they're those ecosystems at times, and then now those ecosystems have either kind of split or they're like in a waiting period type thing is what I've like they kind of run to a dead end at that point. Uh, either the twitters are not active or um, you have to be followed by them, or they're just kind of like waiting on the next release of next release of information. It seems like. Keys. I think one of the, the biggest things that people are ignoring as well is when you have someone who worked on the nuclear code for Bill Gates and worked at NASA and that is now spending quite literally 12 hours a day working on this system, um, I've, I've never seen, or at least that I know of, of, a NASA former employee being even remotely in crypto, let alone um, you know, doing this kind of stuff on a new chain. So I don't know why they would spend this much time if they didn't think this is going to absolutely blow up. Especially on a bunch of plebs like us. <laughs> yeah, no, you're definitely right. That's definitely a lot of time that they've spent doing all this stuff. And I mean, it's like, just to be able to type all the stuff into the IRC chat that they type, it's like Insane. exhausting for me to read it, let alone to type it. When, it. when you think about it, they're not doing much throughout the day. Like, they're outside of the IRC, they're not doing a lot with their tokens until they, they launch a new one or, or, you know, burn liquidity with something else. They, they don't do a lot now. They did a lot before, but now it's, it's not too much. What's up, Paul Strings? You can go ahead. I have no idea why my hand's up and I don't know how to put it down. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think uh, not unless this was already pre-planned and pre-ordained, I don't think they would have made any moves until it was uh, to go and to the point to where, I mean, I think that all hands are off at this point. I mean, there's certain things that are going on and certain things that are kind of maybe out of the public eye a little bit, but I think uh, all of this, if, if they're to this point of the, uh, to the point to where they're able to mint die and they're doing things like this, it's... Uh, it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. Well, so did anyone catch um, from the video of them in Zurich where they were talking about uh, the encryption system that they have and that they're working on and, you know, all that kind of stuff? And where they, they called Dysnomia a planet? Yeah, so Disomnia yeah, was found in 2005 <clears throat> by a group of NASA scientists. Whenever they found a, they found a, they found a, a dwarf moon called Eris, and around Eris, they found this other, this other rotating moon around it, and that moon was Disomnia. So maybe the names, the Maria was what was working at NASA at the time when they found Disomnia. So maybe that's why he named it. Why he named it, I'm not sure, but that's whenever they found it. Yeah, definitely. It's, that's that's probably why. I I just I know I watched that video from I don't know when was it two thousand and six or something or no uh, I for, I forget when it was from but it was the original James video that went around and and it was the only uh. content we had of him. But in that video, he spoke a lot about these poles and the uh, importance of having these poles in place that are stable and 
to me, I, I just think that the uh, the, the uh, busy Toby GitHub and the addresses dot soul, the the primary addresses on that list kind of act as those poles where if they can keep those stable and, and keep keep it so that those don't fluctuate too much and um, the holders don't just you know infinite dump or, or do whatever if those remain stable then the entire ecosystem remains stable and and can flourish and and do whatever it wants as long as the core assets on that address list stay okay yeah, I think that's the point of the bonds too, right? So like there's certain assets that are tied. We already know like like circle two, like they're all they're all ratioed to a certain extent, right? So circle two is double whatever P die is. So I'm sure there's an asset that's above circle two that's so many X's above circle two and then up and up and up and up all the way to the point at the very top. And if you look at like a waterfall effect, so those bots don't have to go around chasing the price around. Those bots can literally just sit on either side of, of one of those of one of those assets or all of those assets all the way up and all the way down. To the point to where it it, it can't be flash loaned. It can, it's med proof, um, and it protect technically would protect any kind of. Uh, I mean, might be a way to help peg it, but yeah, but it literally it could front run a flash loan for sure. I mean, and even though you flash loan die, it's you get sixty six cents on the dollar, so you're already struggling there. So hurting die at this point would be very hard to do. But the only thing that can hurt a stable coin once it reaches its peg is usually a malicious attack. And I believe the, the the whole rate, like you like just what you're saying, just that same point. It's just that, that since they are ratioed, and there are certain assets that do hold certain things, and the bonds are for a reason. Putting those bonds into place, locking those in, and then locking the uh, locking them into one main bond, which is the the Teddy Nine. I think that all plays a plays a part of it too. Yeah, I uh, I I think the 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 biggest thing that we should understand is that the uh, whenever Maria holds a lot of an asset, they're not going to just dump it on the market. Um, they're, they're, they're using it for liquidity and like more, most likely it's going to be burned liquidity. And when you actually think about that, uh, it, it, it's a beautiful system because as we move up in PDI and if PDI, for example, uh, is greatly outperforming PUSDT, then you have this whole other side of the ecosystem on PUSDT that now needs some love and needs some direction of, or some flow of capital from us being the, the community. And whenever we direct this, this capital towards that direction to, I guess, support the PUSDC, PUSDT side, once we you know, see a few assets that appreciate in price or, or, or whatever it's going to be that Maria has planned, that just ends up being... Um, more lock liquidity. And so as we move up in these levels of lock liquidity, PDI and PUSDT and PUSDT's, PUSDC, fuck them, I keep mixing those up, um, the floor keeps raising. And every time you raise the floor, uh, it makes it less volatile, it, 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 it becomes more steady. Um, but we're going to get a lot more adoption that way. So as we increase adoption, we increase the floor and we increase the liquidity. And so once we get to a dollar, after we continue doing these steps, um, it's, it's just going to happen. And then once we're, we're actually there, we're, we'll get a lot more support probably from Richard, from the MakerDAO team, from anybody that holds over a hundred million uh, PDI. And it's, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's such a clear roadmap that even if it takes 10 years, like it, we're going to get there. I think if you watch a lot of that too, um, I, I, I recognize it because I do it in my own ecosystem. And if you, if you take those words, buy and sell away, right? And it's just swap. All you're doing is swapping, right? So like throughout my own ecosystem, if I want to go reward or the match to whatever, like, I can run 20 or 50 or 100 grand through those and leave the price where it was, but just pay everyone rewards, right? And for me, I can do that as a way to pay my holders, but on four and four side, it's a way to just add and grow LPs. And if you look at this pendulum swing, there's a big pendulum swing in a tropa from PDI to RAP BTC, and it just happens naturally in the background, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and all it's doing is growing those, those liquidities. So... I, I do totally agree with a lot of what you just said, Ben, and I think uh, one kind of big thing that I look at is I'm not 
I'm not in a rush for that big pop or some big influence or influx of money at it. It's just like, I know the math works. It just works real, real slow. Like, no one ever has to trade any of this. The arbitrage will, will take care of all of it. It'd take 100,000 years, probably. But, you know, we, we helping it, obviously, move along. And, and it doesn't matter if they trade. People can swing trade and, and do everything, right? All volume just adds to that floor and keeps things moving. Yep. And when, whenever you swap PDI for a Tropa, it does absolutely nothing to the PDI price. It, it stays flat, but now you've moved capital into a Tropa, and then you move from a Tropa to down, and then once you're in the, the ecosystem, it does nothing to the PDI price, but, but keep it stable. And so whenever 414 launches a token in the IRC, and you get somebody who has $200 now turn into um, fifty thousand dollars, or or whatever they just hit, um, like what we hit in BFF was incredible. Well, now you have this this person who becomes a voice and a person who now can maybe quit their job or, or can now live off of crypto, who makes it their their mission to tell as many people as possible about this ecosystem. That's how you gain more and more adoption is by changing people's lives so that they can then change others' lives. And um, they've done that more than once in, in, through the IRC. Definitely. And, uh, Agreed. As that adoption goes, you know, how many people from the outside are going to understand this? Like, think about percentages, right? What percent of the world has a clue about crypto or is actually invested? It's less than 1%. There's not many of us here, right? So then it's like, how many of us are actually trading shit coins on MetaMask? Oh, okay, maybe 50% of that 1%, probably not even 10% of us are playing. Like, there's 2,000 holders on most of our main coins. Like, that gives you an idea, right, with billions of people in the world. So it's like, to try and onboard all these people that are just truly never going to understand any of this, waste of time, right? But for those of us here, for the whatever number of people are listening, these are the ones we really want. These are the ones we build with. These are the ones that are, we're all going to, uh, you know, sit at Sunny's Pub in Mexico one day. And, and now how many people have read the entirety of the IRC chat log? Because I know I have. <laughs> and it's been painful. But oh, it's, I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> today I was actually just like, I need to stop this shit. There's like, what is actually going on anymore? But yeah. For me, like, it kind of takes and, over your life. <laughs> I, I know you guys have heard me for you know, the last year. For me, it's blockchain. I, I'm like, I do, I, like, I definitely have an issue with the N word going on with Maria. And yeah. I, I start to look at things and I'm like, all right. I also had a problem with RH doing his outrage marketing. It literally turned me off. For those two years of false chain, I was like, I can't wait for this shit to launch so I can sell it, right? Like, fuck this guy. But. His personality, or 414's personality, versus what's on the blockchain to me, I, I just there, there's a line that I have to draw, right? Because like I don't care what your wallet's doing. If I hate you or like you, if you're doing something good, I see you doing it, I'll follow it. Like if there's money to be made, this is crypto, man. And as sad as it is, we all put a lot of things aside for it. Yeah, as bad as it sounds, I, f I feel like what they're building is so large and it's going to be so big and they have um I th I, it's, it's going to sound bad but i think they're directing a lot of hate towards b roots <laughs> because i think he uh he's he's in the ecosystem deep and he's probably got a lot of wallets um in, a, in his hand in a lot of cookie jars and he might be messing with some stuff that they don't want him to mess with so sounds bad but i think a lot of the racism is directed towards him either that or they just don't want um you know anybody to jump into the irc catch the next big token without knowing I anything do. about the ecosystem like, i love the roots because he's playing his game right his game is not my game but i'll be honest with you he doesn't understand any of this shit no he doesn't he really there's, doesn't there's, man there's like, no he has way. zero knowledge on it and and that's really all i've ever wanted to do like him and Ian, any influencer anyone that's got a voice all i want to do is educate
I'm wanting to shake out the figures. Um, ultimately, like he, he wants people on board that are really like have, you know, discriminating awareness and are able to look beyond labels and, and aren't followers um, and, and can understand like what, what the vision is about. And like, I mean, naked. And I had this talk yesterday about all that and like and what's appropriate and what's not and depending on where you grew up and what era you grew up in and like the actual meaning of the word. Like I don't I don't think James is racist at all. Like I, I think he's actually like implying that to mean something totally different than uh, a black person <laughs> completely. And I think that's part of the the whole uh ethos of what he's doing you know um he's looking to hire people honestly he's looking for teammates he's um he's looking to do marketing he's looking to do you know to go like to levels i don't think you know people or most people like 99 percent of the population have ever envisioned and even within crypto i think he's trying to do things that 90 95 percent haven't even even in vision and um, oh, ninety nine point nine, and I just yeah. had uh, in January. I flew out to Hollywood and sat down with Roland for for about four hours and drank coffee with the uh, false right. up here in Freedom. And I'm gonna tell you from the bottom of my heart, that man's not racist. Uh, he's a misunderstood stole and an absolute genius. And like when you put those two things together, like that person is exactly who I would expect. Like, well, I. I'll, 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 th I'll throw this out there for everyone. Um, it, it is a little theory, but the, I think the biggest reason why he's saying all this provocative shit is it's battle testing the system and, and the network because Richard used to go on stream and, and say certain things. It would pump the price. It would, it would dump the price. Even with eHex, it dumped the price based on one tweet. And that's not DeFi. That's control with, with one central authority. And so if 414 is saying all this racist shit, saying provocative shit, saying as much crazy whack shit as they can possibly imagine, and it's doing nothing to the network, and there's there's no negative effect to the network, um, that's the best system ever built. Because even if Vitalik came out and said, Ethereum is stupid, uh, everything would dump. But if Maria went in the chat and said, PDI is dumb, no one would dump PDI. Um, because we're just so used to them saying stuff that, that do, either doesn't matter, is racist, or just goes against everything they've been doing. I think on the wider scale, too, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ages in crypto right now. I'm, I'm on the, the older side of crypto, but I, we're at the point where words aren't going to hold the weight that they used to, right? Because they only hold the weight that we give them. And that's really about the last word that holds that much weight. And when it doesn't hold weight one day is when racism is really starting to break down and be gone. So, like, yeah. I can see how it gets used. It's just, for those of us that are, or were brought up, you know, anyone here that was alive in the 1900s, like, that bird holds a lot of weight. And as an ally, at this point, I just feel, you know, a, a little bit more for for four one sports safety, right? Because like honestly, not, brother, you know, there's a lot of people that suck dick that don't like that kind of talk, or they like it. I mean, it doesn't like a lot of those people <laughs> suck dick anyway. I mean, they did suck dick in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming in spicy. Hey, guys, no, but a lot of people suck dick. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> no, but even even with the newest token launch called Prostitution. I think it's just a direct, uh, s like you, you have to separate words and, and the name of tokens with the actual liquidity and, and reason behind them. Uh, right. He that, wants us to learn, like he's forcing people to actually look at everything that's going on. I mean, if you look at the actual token name and then the ticker, it says suspend prostitution. So what what does all that really mean? You know what I mean? And like you have to really go back to the IRC logs to kind of try and get some kind of uh, understanding. And even then, it's like unless you ask him a direct question about it, and he happens to actually reply and like spill it out in clean, 
you know, plain English, like, it's still left up to us to, like, decide, you know, it's, it's, um, it's insane how, how much, like, how many things are going on, like, I mean, like, I, I have to beg to differ on the, on the word, especially the way he's using it, like, I think that's part of the whole nuance, like, the difference between Negro and nigger is, is different, right? I mean, like, and, and, and what, and how you use it and how you say it means everything, like, I think it really does. You know what I mean? Like, if you're being disrespectful to somebody, you're being disrespectful. It doesn't really matter what the yeah. fuck you call them. You know what I mean? Like, if you're like, words are just a, a label. They're they're just they're just the roadmap. They're not the actual road. They're not the actual like substance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think James is really, really like this whole like. Everything up till now, and still it will be for a while, has been a shakeout of like him. Like he said it today. Like if you don't understand what the log is about, I'm gonna ban your ass. Like if you're just a Telegram user that's coming here and like you don't understand what the log is about, and that's like something I really want to dive into. Like how do we get a copy of the whole log? Like um, is that you, it's it's sequential that, to him. Okay. <laughs> you no. do not want that. But also, I no, I do. I do. No, because if you make it searchable, so like you can just go, you know, filter and 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 find what you want related to a specific topic. Like, yeah, you definitely want that. Like, it's actually important to his vision. No, I know. You delete and stuff and from there. Pe people are definitely working on making it clear what each token kind of represents or w what the liquidity roadmap looks like with each token. So it's, it's definitely coming. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it, it has to fully come from the community. It can't just be James doing all the work. Yeah, eventually. It's manipulation. Well, <laughs> that's why we have four legs to uh, the Howie table. Are you guys aren't like oh just just about the him why he's saying these type of things. So like it like you guys know what's been going on over the last few years. Like the the Overton window has certainly shifted. Um, whether it has been four chan, the lockdowns or in a little bit of both. Like I remember Sunny, you were trying to stop everyone from saying Jeet and you just had to accept it at one point because everybody is just a fucking cod player. Like there is it's like there's people that are sitting there LARPing about understanding what we used to do on the internet, and they, they weren't there. And you can't do what we used to do. They're just, they're just trying to understand, like, he, he, we all, we know he's way smarter than all of us, right? He thinks on a different level. Like, how could you have all those YouTube videos ready to go every day for so fucking long? Right. I mean, if you haven't been watching. <laughs> he is trying to raise the... IQ. I mean, there was this thing for a long time about the hex IQ. Like you had, basically, and like a bunch of people went off on it. Like they got all high and mighty. Oh, I got the hex IQ. Basically, like I understand this one. You know, most crypto users don't get it, and it, it turned out to be like a negative. And at this point in time, like really, like tech has gotten to the point where like it's waiting on us to catch up. Like Richard is waiting on us to uncover, you know, the things that we need to, like, help get in place. Like, consciousness needs to take a major leap in a lot of ways, like, um, before any of this stuff can actually become a reality. And I think there's a lot of, like, really smart people that are not only devs and understand the code, but also understand the marketing and also understand social consensus, also understand, you know, value as a representation of social consensus and they're trying to help take us like to the whole next level um like very quickly yeah so this needs to be done quickly because fucking they're fucking with us right we went from hex and we were just making money in the markets and da 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 to fucking trying to kill everyone and some crazy wars and just insane shit that is proven like when you look into it and smart people don't know you have to you have to react, right? So they are trying to they're trying to force that next level. <laughs> and you're right, dude. 
he ain't coming back on stream until we destroy the Hexagons. <laughs> I mean, well, no, right? I, I, I disagree with that. I think we're all going to eventually become Hexagons because I think it's going to be the, the thickest liquidity um, yeah. with with no middleman being your 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 yield. It's it's going to be not destroy. I mean, convert, convert. No, yeah, they, went, they, they, they went the wrong years. way. Because we're all hexagons. Most of us are, are day one hexagons, right? Oh, uh, for three years, never touched hex until about a month ago when he made that tweet. And when I saw it, and I couldn't decide on which one it was, I just bought the other <laughs> one. And now I just have both assets combined in one. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I think he, I mean, I think it's Rick, true though, is it not? Right? Like, it's every of them. So I think things are going to change this cycle. Right? Like, how many of you guys realize how much things are going to change this cycle? I'm not just talking yeah. about like um, numbers, like you know the overall market cap going from three trillion to ten or thirty trillion or a hundred trillion. I'm talking about the actual tech, like. What well, Richard just tweeted, you know, about um, Open Dime, is that what he called it? Or is that, that's what it was called in the TV show? Like, the tech that's a real thing like, you can buy. Yeah, the tech is so far more advanced, like, and it will be, like, I think that's what's going to get it. Like, there's an onboarding issue, ultimately. Like, we're, we're still facing the same amount of money washing around all the markets. You know, like, um, and we you know, know the market... Well, it would come up with a UX problem, wouldn't it? Those, like, you're just trading seed keys, right? So it, it creates a nice little cool thing. You can you can trade your seed keys, and you're basically paying people in words. Like, you probably divvy out some words, you divvy out the price in words, and you give them the words. Well, I That's think, just I crazy. Think, I think you're definitely right that it's difficult to onboard people, especially onto Pulse Chain, because it's it's such a pain in the ass get, setting up the, the, your wallet and getting it through the bridge, but I personally have onboarded people that don't know anything about crypto simply to put them into PDI because if they lose... Well, there's a lot of tribalism. Like, honestly, there's a bunch of, like, Hotonomics and, you know, um, Gophers where there's a dip catcher, you know, went to, went to Seoul and, um, like, a lot of people are like, you know, so I can't do this. It's too, it's too tough. Like, it's well, it, and basically, it was just different. Like, Recall. as soon as they tried it, and it went, and it works the same way in reverse. Like, Pulse Chain guys were like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And it's like, just step back a second and think about, you know, back when you first got into blockchain. And nothing is any different. It's just the same thing. You just haven't done it. You're a little nervous. You're not used to it. And as soon as people did it, they're like, okay, this is easy. You know, no problem. Got it all figured out. You know, Orcas, you know, swap, blah, blah, blah. No problem. It's okay. like just this. For, forget it, forget about those people. Just focus on the five people that you know, and if you can onboard those five people to get a hundred dollars worth of PDI, and all of a sudden it's worth a hundred thousand. I actually don't know what the conversion is right now, but if we get if in one to two years we get to one dollar PDI, and you've onboarded five people, well, now where the fuck are they going to put that money? They're going to put that money back into the ecosystem, and. When you onboard those five people, and when they see that their a couple hundred bucks is now turned into twenty or thirty grand, they're going to tell five other people, and th this is how it always begins, and this is how this network effect yeah, happens. Like this, uh, it's it, it, it's going to happen. This network way. effect, and right? But the I'm only way like you can you can do it is not through Hex because Hex is, has has done it already. It's not and the token that's the problem, or even the chain. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. It's just the fact of, like, people, like, getting outside of their box and, like, trying something new and realizing that it's not, you know, difficult at all. Like, but, and I think that even though it's not difficult, it is still an obstacle that, like, needs to be solved. And I think in this cycle, we're going to see brand new tech that makes onboarding, like, no issue at all like um and that's but, when things are really going to start to fly i think initially it has a lot to do with the token because selling one dollar p die is so easy 
you can go up to your friend and say, hey, like 400 bucks now gets you 500,000 if this happens, which everyone here who's actually been following on a daily basis and knows who 414 is and the ecosystem they're building behind PDI, it's no longer just a meme coin that's going to hit a dollar. It's, it's an ecosystem. We're, we're basically selling them into an ecosystem. And if we believe in this ecosystem, which I think everyone here does, and you're comfortable with, with risking four or $500 of your buddy's money or your mom or your dad or your whoever it is, um, I think everyone here should be onboarding at least 10 to 15 people. Because if this does happen and you didn't, then you're actually going to feel pretty shitty. You're just going to be the only rich person in your network <laughs> um, outside of the people who are rich in the, in the fiat world. But... Um, it's the easiest sell because of the token, in my opinion. The thing I keep thinking about recently is that PDI isn't even like, it's not a 414 token. Like, and I think that like needs to be repeated. Um, like PDI is the, I think still the best um, route to getting into a tropa. But even regardless, based on of, of PDI, based on where we're at at this point with the, the whole system, like um, we may see brand new things. Like peace stables is an open ended term in my mind. It doesn't necessarily mean even PDI, PSDC, PSDT. Like um, we could see decentralized you know MakerDAO, spark protocols and other protocols like rig's been talking about like things that have already been set and put in place that are um built for pulse chain and decentralized um that actually become the the real p stables like a trip on its own in my mind at this point is is totally separate from from PDI, POSDC, and PSDT. Like and I think it, like that's ultimately where the focus should be on. I'm not saying don't hold those, especially PDI. Um but PDI is really not a tropa. It's like a tropa is so much more like Rig's been diving into the code. I meant to do it. Like he he um he copied the contract and threw it in Remix, couldn't do much with it, um, and then was looking at other avenues to try and actually be able to launch his own version of it, um, his own copy. I would, I would almost have to disagree with that, and I think everyone here should, should understand this, this part, and I think it's pretty obvious, which is that when we actually do get to a dollar, one dollar P-Die, the liquidity that's burned between Atropa and PDI is going to be close to 10 billion. So if you have a 10 bit, if you just bring that scale down to, you know, tokens that we know, if you have a relationship with another token where most of your liquidity exists and is burned with something else, if anything, I get it. Well, what, I know what you're if saying. Anything, but honestly, brother, like, that's that's just part of the mechanism. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, that Atropa is, is so much more than that. Like, um, I'm not saying Pete, I won't peg at all. I, I'm just saying that, like, we have to start thinking larger. Like, um, can I add real quick to uh, if you zoom out, right? and you look at the entire airdrop and what we're doing, all we're doing is bootstrapping all of crypto. We can make anything we want go to parity with this fake coin. And if we make everything go to parity, we'll literally end up with equal to and or one day more than all of crypto. <coughs> it's so crazy, it's man. A good way to put every it. I'm not. I'm definitely not trying to fud PDI at all. I just think well, that no, like no. you can't fud PDI. So you can't fud PDI. PDI. <laughs> no one will, will give a shit. Look what, what we're doing. If you look at the LPs and you look at how these tokens work, right? We just get these free tokens out of nowhere into LP. It makes the LP stronger. A tropa just says PDI is number one because a tropa is smart as fuck and knew what the fuck was going on, so, right? So like, like when I did A1A, I just picked like the top twenty and. Yeah, that worked out well. And now you go through, it's like each one of these will grow 
and people will dump the token as it goes. Right? It was just taking advantage of the power of the free airdrops in liquidity. There you go. Yeah. The, 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 the other interesting point is when you have all this burned liquidity with the Tropa, $1, it's going to be difficult to move a Tropa itself, especially since 414 only holds 1%. So it's going to be tough to, it'll be interesting to see what the price of a Tropa gets to, but it'll be tough to move that. Now, for, for an entity or, or anybody to have control over the, the uh, over PDI or the P stables, they're going to have to do it through the next top liquidity that's attached to a Tropa, which is Dan. That you've got down and TSFI who have to kind of act as these volatile assets to counter the, the, the or, or keep control over the peg. So if somebody comes in and, 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 and sells a shit ton, then that means there might have to be a well, mechanism through, through TSFI or down. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at is like so far, like we still have this limited perspective and we associate P dying a trip as like some kind of like locked at the hip, like, um, you know, partners when they're, and they're really not like, I think there's going to be some new things coming on chain that are going to totally shift as uh, some new, like some major amounts of liquidity and new protocols stable protocols coming in that are uh beyond anything that we've seen before like i i can't put my finger on it a lot of it is like what rig rig is touched on um like i i don't want to speculate about stuff but it, it's definitely very obvious that some of the real real og chads like i'm talking you know 414 and and better um and even better than Richard um, are are waiting for the proper time to release, you know, open the gates and release the dogs, and we're going to see fireworks like we didn't expect. Um, it's <laughs> it's totally Richard's style too, and and we already know that there's these things going on. Like with, like I don't know if there's like exact links to Pulse Chain. Like some of it's speculative. But uh, it's kind of hard to ignore for people that um, are really paying attention to some of this stuff and and, and what the overall intent and you know and interest is, especially from uh, a first principles standpoint and and freedom in general. Like it's defy or die, like literally in my mind. Like it's not even a question. Something I also wanted to to quickly mention before. Uh, we, we let other people speak obviously is, is when they spoke on the, uh, the video in, when they were in Zurich and the, the, the video everyone's aware of um, they brought up an interesting point about taxes where you, it, it's currently the law isn't for I guess the United States it's not you can't call something a taxable event if you go from a token to another token if you swap from one token to another it's more like if you swap from Pulse Chain into PDI, I guess that's a taxable event. But if you swap between Mantisa and uh, Lilies, how can they tax that? Right? Like if you if you create a token, like this is the example they mentioned. If you create a token, give it very very thin liquidity, and then you you bond it ninety percent of its supply with another token, and then you pump the hell out of that of token A. Uh, to a, to a quadrillion dollar value, and then you swap between those tokens multiple times. How are they going to call that a taxable event? And technically, it's millions of dollars that you're swapping between the two, but that's not taxable. Um, so I, this is obviously not tax advice, and, and don't take this literally. But there's no other ecosystem in cryptocurrency where it's a chain of tokens that is creating this economy that kind of isn't taxable, where you can well. Have Exactly. This is the way that I see what James is trying to build and wants us all to, to build our own versions of, not all of us, but you know what I mean, is he's trying to duplicate like traditional financial instruments that are, you know, proven in terms of like how they function, but in a decentralized way 
that makes them non-securities. Like there, there's no protocol, like, and it's actually multiple sp smart contracts that make it function. So even though they may have been launched by one person, there's like, it completely passes the Howie test. Like, and that, that's like paramount to me. Like James is obviously very clued into, um, <laughs> high level, um, banking, high level, um, traditional finance. And he's trying to duplicate it in a way that, um, makes it immutable, uh, and immune, you know, indestructible. Like, well, there, there is a reason why he called legal legal. And it's because if you do a launch in the, the classic three token structure, then it's technically legal. So if you have something like a tropa, and this, this is what they also described in the video, and you, you pair it to something like PDI. So let's say you're, you're trying to launch your own token. If you launch, uh, if you burn a lot of liquidity with either a tropa or a PDI with the assumption that the two of them are going to succeed and, and go up in value, and then you use you know, a portion of, of that supply of that new token that you just created to burn uh, with token B, and then you create token C, where 100% of token C is burned in liquidity with token B, and the, the only exposure that you can get to token C is by, uh, by buying through token B into token C, and you're putting yourself in the hole, meaning you're, you've lost money in the transaction, so there, it, it makes it a legal process. Um, and if anybody wants to buy your product afterwards, because it's, it's so tied to the ecosystem and you, you give an incentive or like a game or something like that, then it, it creates the perfect storm. And they've been able to do all of this with, with tokens that don't even have meaning behind them. They're, they're the most random tokens ever. And uh, if we come together, create something with meaning, in the same kind of structure, uh, I think we're going to absolutely kill it. Rig, are you ready to go? Because I think that's the perfect segue into what Rig is, is found with with uh, how value has kind of been hidden um, and even like seemingly lost um, through the wrapping process. Yeah, I'd like to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, so there seems to be that yeah, 100% there's a game involved. Um, in game, I guess. You're kind of breaking up, dude. Yeah, he's on the road. Yeah. I think. Hey, if it's... you want to step down and come back, and them, maybe it'll work. He's on the road all the time. It's um, it's kind of normal part for the course for him. But uh, um, yeah, he's uncovered so much incredible stuff. It's like it, it's it's insane. Really. It's very hard to dispute. It's like, but if you dig deep enough, you see the value, and you're like, okay, are they is is the is the scanner the block explorer just not understanding? And indexing, you know, or, or displaying this stuff wrong, or like, <laughs> or is there some amazing game going on here that like uh, the real Chads have figured out literally years ago? Um, and I kind of tend to agree with the latter. Like, um, at this point in time, pretty much everything is is possible within the code. Like. Um, for guys that really understand how it works, like there's functions in a tripa that like you don't see anywhere else, um, yeah. ever. Yeah, can, can you hear me better? Yes. Yeah. Much so better. there's definitely functions inside of a tropa that talk about um, rebounding into this world and rebounding out of this world and wrapping sort of like a what is it called? I can't remember the exact terminology. It was like in world. And then once you receive this world, a oh, world bonus, there's a world bonus that you get. And then once you receive the world bonus, the particle that collides would rebound to Earth. If you do not have the world bonus, it will seemingly vanish from the world. 
Um, and I'm assuming that means wrapping tokens to a certain extent to a, to the point to where they can leave this world and they have control over that world, which could be the layer two that he talks about. Um, seemingly make it a private layer is my assumption. Um, because there's like one of the one of the tokens that launched was called DMC12. DMC12 also known it was called Time Machine, and it had a liquidity pool tied to it that had 12 zeros. And inside those 12 zeros was a tropa and a bunch of other tokens, and they all had zero, like listed in zero, like you couldn't see them. You could just see that there was, you saw those tokens, like the actual token name, but the values weren't there. Um, and inside the Atropa contract, there's like a rec you can do a request to go to this layer, you can be asked to go to this layer, you can be removed from this layer, you can be added to this layer. And like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> like I said, it, is, it, gets, it gets pretty deep. But it seems to be like there's something you have to do inside inside the atropa. That's why he said, "Build it like me, build like I did," because there's something like in maybe that has to do with the bonding is too like the bonds too, which has to do with yet another protocol that was involved with something with Hex early on. The Axion, I wasn't really involved with Hex, but it was like a one to one drop. But they had the same type of system where you put three ships together or three parts of the ships together. And uh, there were all three different bonds created the starship. And then with the starship, you're able to leave Earth. And then well, whenever you left Earth or left the that atmosphere, you, get, you, got a, you got access to a higher layer, to a higher yield. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if they hear that that's just a reference. So they're utilizing that to look into the same, I mean, say technically the same types of things. You'd have to read the white paper um, to see the connections between the, the bonding of those layers and the, and the ships that they were talking about and then leaving the Earth. Which would kind of be like the whole Dasania planet. It's in and of itself, right? So yeah, again, it's highly speculative. But I mean, I did read inside the code and inside Sam's one of Sam's codes itself talks about the world bonus and then how the particles collide. And then as you read read it, it sounds like a game. It sounds like someone's playing a video game. But if you read it out more and more, it, it's literally it's like it talks about like the the flame effect. And like that's a it's a steady flame of X and Y going from one end to the other and then landing on X and Y on the other end of the web. Like it's like literally like the moving of assets is what I, is what it's almost it's hidden within the meaning of a game, but it's literally moving the assets between the X and Y. Starts at fifty fifty, you know, and then it can move it around at at a, at a sprinkle, like at a at a at rain is what it was what it was called raining, and then it was flame, which was a steady flow, and then there was something called explosion, which was where it like. It can literally just like pulsate um, X and Y, like from whatever point to whatever point. So uh, I'm, I mean, maybe that's part of <laughs> the stability AI type of yeah. Because I know within I think sixty percent of the servers at one time on Pulse Chain, uh, it's like sixty percent of them were running sort of some sort of stability AI uh, inside their uh, inside their nodes. So stability AI itself is something that is utilized to copy something from the framework down. And then, uh, I mean, they use it for, for movies and pirating and all this other stuff. But using it within crypto, like the way that he, what we've seen is that he had access to liquidity pools that were wrapped up eight layers and airdropped to so many people, right? And after airdropping them to so many different wallets and then wrapping them up to the eighth layer, it became, it literally labeled it a scam a scam token or whatever it was and then at that point the value in there was no longer tracked inside that layer inside those tokens inside that eighth layer there was millions of dollars in value across multiple different layers but after he went back in and unwrapped it and he could then he could go technically he could go trade in that layer right and it would be untraceable so it's a privacy protocol so so to speak um the the company that blocked it or whatever it was, it's called Block SEC. It's a great, it's a good thing to help track stuff. Like you can get in there, you can run simulations, you can run forks. You can, it's called MetaSleuth, MetaSleuth inside the, the application. And then you can literally take it and there's like a flow fund. Like you can literally watch the flow of assets. It like has like an actual mind map in there. Like a really cool thing that led me to. So I don't know how it all ties together, but it's like, some of the coolest, some of the coolest things, like to being able to fork, run, and simulate your own contract, like all within a few clicks of a button, is pretty interesting. And then the fact that you know it's you know the block SEC, like I don't know if it's a play on words or if it is like blockchain SEC, but it's just called block SEC app dot block I mean, I suggest everyone go check it out. 
And then uh, it's that. And then you have like extensions that you can put on there, and you can go to so many different chains. Of course, every everything except Pulse Chain. And then uh, you can see that this is a reoccurrence on multiple chains of the eighth layer being an auto an auto phishing scam type thing. It's where the you know value is no longer tracked and things like that. So um, yeah. It's just uh, something that's very interesting. I mean, it's all speculation, of course, but I mean, it's uh, everything's on the blockchain for sure. Wow! Yeah, no, that was a lot. <laughs> it's uh, um, like super interesting. The link is app abb dot blocksec dot com, um, and then what Rig was specifically talking about was like Metasleuth. Um, if you go to app dot blocksec dot com you'll see the uh the link like halfway down the page or something that for for metasleuth and uh that's insane it's it's interesting because there's like a definite um almost purposeful gatekeeping going on you know everybody's complaining about you know, a scanner or, or, or even wallets, you know, there's some good wallets, there's, you know, enough wallets that interact, but um, I generally, I, I fully believe that, like, once the time is right, we're going to just start to see, like, an unleashing of in incredible tech, like, um, I think, to a certain degree, RH wants the community to build um some things <laughs> there's definitely some things we could build uh like a block explorer and so on but i also know that you know i feel without a doubt that he's he's got tricks up his sleeve that we won't necessarily be able to connect to him but he's gonna make sure that you know we get when we what we need after the shakeout um I think it's kind of general consensus that there's been, you know, a shakeout um, going on, and uh, you know, fifty or fifty-two weeks. Like the original, that original fifty-week video was was related to hacks, but the same principle still is uh, in effect. We know how Richard operates. Um, he definitely wants to. Uh, Get rid of bad actors in uh, as many ways that he can, um, and produce a hockey stick like we've never seen before. I'd like to hear from Gabriel if you if, if you'd like to speak, Gabriel, because you're a CTO, if, if I'm not mistaken. Well, good evening. <clears throat> oh, I've always got a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> just, <laughs> What's up, just hey, Zach. Zach knows I like to, I like to discuss the best my way, opinions. Way. What's that? Oh, hey. no, go ahead, man. Oh, yeah, some, something blanked out. I didn't hear anything at all. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, right now, um, so, so we have the PDI narrative, which is just wonderful. I mean... We are in an attention economy. It doesn't matter what crypto you have. You have to have attention. How do you hold that attention? You know, functionality, um, you know, your use case. So, um, by the, um, you know, right now, you know, everyone was freaking out about um, when... Uh, Richard was talking about PDI. He sent all those people over to come and grab their, uh, to come and basically sell their PDI, not to help those people out to give them money, but to give us an opportunity to buy up PDI, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. It's also to get them to sell early. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. What they sure. in the clean. Wait, say again? I think that was a liquidity play. I think he wants those tokens in liquidity. Right, right. I so think, I think hacks was the same thing. Right, so uh, this opportunity right now, for, for those who have passed the IQ test, you know, year after year after year, <laughs> uh, 
um, we, we realize that there's, you know, much more going on here. And, you know, we've changed, we've learned. And, you know, if you haven't, you kind of take off and uh, go work on other things. But um, right now, the, um, the just, I don't know how long ago it was, but Richard gave a, sent out a tweet about um, hardware wallets being a, um, them regulating uh, any, any hardware wallet. Have any of you uh, spoken about that or seen that tweet? No, I have not. Yeah, I saw it. I just don't know how they can do that. Well, okay, so, yeah, this is an interesting question. A lot of people say, oh, they can't touch my hardware wallet. Well, they're already, I'll have to put a, a, a tweet, I, uh, a message I put in Telegram kind of explaining this, but um, Trezor and Ledger both have controversies historically in the last year where they started to and they've been implementing tracking for a long time when you go through their servers and use their software but um, uh, Ledger had a, a system where they would save your seed words for you now they say you have to you know ask them to save the seed words but if they have the functionality to save your seed, wor seed words I don't want that functionality in there for for that company to save my seed words. What if someone hacks the company? So, um, and and they say that oh, when we take your seed words, we put it between three different companies. I don't care. I don't want my seed words put anywhere. So there's a there's a back end push, and they've done this with uh, technology companies. Um, they basically. The government comes in and puts pressure on them, saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, but just, you know, open up and, and you know, scare them, and they'll open up access to their data. And so the so basically, we understand that um, Trezor and Ledger, because uh, Trezor also had some controversy. I'd have to get my the message that I wrote. I'll put it in the, the chat down at the bottom. Um, but... I had some listed some articles that kind of explained it. So if if they are um, the the moment they start tracking things, then they can start uh, regulating things. And you know already we have um, the Ethereum chain is is uh, OFAC compliant, so they can just shut down transactions if they're going through the Infura um, uh, validation then in fear of uh, server farms, then they can shut down on the on the blockchain level. And, you know, they already did that with uh, Tornado Cash. So, ha the you know, having um, some kind of uh, endpoint that is not, you know, you've got open source hardware wallets, you know, all those things, I, I think that's the next big thing, and we have to do it pretty quickly uh, for Pulse Chain to be totally um, bulletproof. Because we've already got the um, IPFS, you know, apps to connect and do everything we need to do. Now we just need to connect securely with a hardware wallet. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go, guys. But thank you so much for having me. We should do more of these. More people should be informed of what the hell is going on versus just watching price go up and. I think it, it's going to take a couple leaders in the eco to, um, to really relay the message on, on what's happening. Cool, Ben. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably try to get this going maybe once a week if we can. Sounds good. Thanks, Zach. See you guys.